Moe's Tavern, Moe speaking. Uh, yes, I'm looking for a Mrs. O problem. First name, B. Ah, uh, yeah, just a minute, I'll check. Uh, B.O. problem. B.O. problem. Come on, guys, do I have a B.O. problem here? Hey, guys, remember the era of prank calls? A week ago, a friend of mine posted a funny list to social media showing a bunch of numbers you could prank call people with in real life, like a rejection hotline, a number that says I am Groot, and a number that leads you to the John Cena meme complete with air horns. And all I could think about was video games. So I thought, how many existing phone numbers out there have been intentionally connected to video games? In this episode, I'll be listing off all of the hidden phone numbers and games that I could find that could be called in real life as sort of an easter egg slash special promotion. And with that, I introduce my list of top 10 video game phone number easter eggs you can call in real life. Try saying that twice. Have you suffered an injury? Tired of getting beat down, choke slam, smacked up. Goldberg's gym is now open in Suplex City. Open for ass kicking. A promotional trailer was released for Uke and Visual Concepts WWE 2K17. The video takes the form of a commercial advertisement that is narrated by professional wrestler Bill Goldberg, where he advertises Goldberg's gym, set in the game's fictional universe known as Suplex City. Nearing the end of the commercial spoof, a number is displayed at the bottom of the screen, and Goldberg tells the audience to call if they wish to sign up. When you call the number in real life, you're forwarded to the answering machine of Brock Lesnar, where he refuses to take any incoming calls, and afterwards we hear what sounds like a fight brewing, only for the call to disconnect. Weird. Suplex City Hotline. Please hold while we transfer the call to... Brock Lesnar! I am not interested in talking to you. In between releases of each episode of Kentucky Route Zero, the team at Cardboard Computer released small interludes to keep up hype and anticipation with their fans. The first episode came with a tour of a virtual museum, and in the next episode, fans were given a theatrical experience compatible with the Oculus Rift. Their third interlude consisted of three parts. The one we're focusing on is the guidebook labeled Here and There Along the Echo. When you call the number on the guide in real life, you're directed to a touchtone switchboard, allowing you to navigate the menus of the Guide to the Echo River for Drifters and Pilgrims. Hello. You have dialed into here and there along the Echo, a guide to the Echo River for Drifters and Pilgrims. This guide is a public service provided by the Bureau of Secret Tourism. For historical sites along the Echo River, press 1. For a guide to the river's flora and fauna, press 2. For help identifying an unfamiliar sound, press 3. A phone number can be spotted at several different locations in the game Dying Light. The number found belongs to that of the fictional Heron City Hall. If you call it in real life, you'll be forwarded to an automated message that states, Welcome to Heron City Hall. Due to unforeseen circumstances, we are unable to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. This was the original recording set out around two years ago. Interestingly enough, when you call the number now, the message has since been changed to the following. Good evening, Alan. Are we feeling better now? Feeling calm? Yeah. I see you brought your pet gorilla with you. So sure, I'm calm. I get the message. 
loud and clear. So this next easter egg sounds like something straight out of a creepy pasta, and I'm probably going to have to give a bit of backstory to the game in order for this one to fully make sense. There's a lot of speculation surrounding the fate of Emil Hartman in the game Alan Wake. Spoiler alert to those who haven't played the game, but it's unknown whether or not Hartman survived his encounter with the Dark Presence, as the last thing we hear from him is him screaming and then a sudden silence. It's his appearance at the end of the signal that has a lot of fans scratching their heads. Is he still alive, or did the Dark Presence take him. In episode 4, The Truth, you find Dr. Emil Hartman's phone number on the second floor. While the number is no longer functional, calling it, you'll be taken to the voicemail of Hartman himself, where he explains he can't take your call. If you listen closely though, you can hear an eerie demonic voice speaking in unison with him. It's pretty spooky stuff. Hello, you have reached Dr. Emil Hartman. I regret that I cannot take your call at this moment. If you are a reporter calling about the creator's dilemma, please note that I will be glad to talk to you, but interview requests should go through my office. If you are an artist facing creative challenges, please leave your name and contact information. My clinic here at Cauldron Lake Lodge specializes in helping creators overcome the obstacles that stand between them and their true potential, and we are at your disposal will help you unlock your true potential and face whatever demons are keeping you from achieving your deepest and greatest dreams. Have a fantastic time. Has this ever happened to you? You get sucked into hell to marry Satan's daughter? Then you need Saints Row Get Out of Hell, the latest and greatest standalone expansion follow-up to the blockbuster game about Saints, Rose, and the Roman numeral 4. In the January 2015 launch trailer for Saints Row Get Out of Hell, a hotline number is included in the infomercial style video. If you call the number from the launch trailer, you'll be directed to a hilariously entertaining 6 minute long hold message. I'm only going to show a sample, but I highly recommend you listen to the full audio clip, which you can find on YouTube, especially if you're a fan of the series or understand the humor of it at least. I feel like it's a nice added touch to the game, as the 6 minute clip alone could give any new or inexperienced player player a sense of immersion into the bizarre universe that's been crafted by volition and high voltage software. Your life for the better forever by ordering Saints Row 4 re-elected or Saints Row get out of hell. We're sorry, but all operators are currently busy. Please stay on the line and your call will be answered in the order it was received. Did you know that by pre-ordering Saints Row 4 re-elected or Saints Row Get Out of Hell, you help send a misguided psychotic along the path to becoming the greatest president of the United States ever? 0.01% of all proceeds go toward the Johnny Gap Memorial Fund, which recruits voiceless wannabes and sets them on their way to greatness. You have to stay the floor and kill without some more. Yeah, that sounds fun, but what has that done with me? The magic, the majesty, the memory. In Infamous Second Son, people with special powers are seen as undesirable menaces that pollute the streets of Seattle. Because of the heavy propaganda perpetuated by the government officials, if you possess special abilities, you're labeled as a bioterrorist, and citizens will turn you into the authorities in a heartbeat. There are billboards scattered around the city that ask people to cooperate. This tip hotline in Second Son can also be dialed in real life. If you call, you'll hear a pre-recorded message from the antagonist, Brooke Augustine, the director of the Department of Justice. In her dialogue, she even references to Cole McGrath, the star of the first two infamous games. Thank you for calling the Department of Unified Protection. Please stand the line for an important message from our director, Brooke Augustine. Bio
Probably one of my favorite easter eggs in the entirety of this list is one of the secret phone numbers found in the God of War game. If you beat the first game in God mode and also destroy the statues in the throne room, you're gifted with two special phone numbers. When you call the number given from destroying all the statues in game, you get a special message from director David Jaff and Kratos himself. It's just so hilariously meta to hear these two bantering back and forth, and it's a nice change from the usual mature tone of the game. By the gods, you've done it! Somehow you found your way here, to me. I offer you my congratulations and my respect. Together, we shall conquer the perils that lay before us, and we shall always- Kratos, dude, dude, they did it. They found our Easter egg. Who are you? It's me, David Jaffe. I directed the game. What game? Your game, God of War. Go away or I'll... Dude, dude, dude. Don't, don't you get it? These guys, they spent all that time breaking those statues. I mean, they must have taken, like, forever. And then they figured out the whole secret code thing. I do not know what you are talking about. We hid the secret pretty damn deep, huh, Kratos? If I kill you, I will get help or... So wait, 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 wait. If you got the secret from the net or a magazine, then actually you kind of suck. I mean, work for it a bit, right, Kratos? Actually, can I call you Crate? No. Don't you hate it when they get the codes off the net? So lazy. Hey, see, Crate, what, what are you so pale for? I am serious. You know, up close, you actually look kind of pasty, if you don't mind me saying. It's, it's kind of gross. Oh, my God! <laughs> ah! Oh, Crate, what are you doing? We got it! Help! We got to make the secret! Ah! He was worse than a screeching harpy. <clears throat> As I was saying, you have found the secret. You have done well. Congratulations, mortal. We will meet again. I won't play the god mode message, as it's not as exciting. It's really just Kratos congratulating you for your achievements and offering you a private tour where he reveals his hidden treasure, the imprisoned soul of Ares. But I can link the full audio in the description below. This easter egg isn't something that can be found in the Assassin's Creed games, but rather was a promotional tie-in with the live-action film, so I'm not 100% sure if it qualifies to be on this list, but because it stemmed from a video game franchise, I decided to keep it in. As part of a promotion for the Assassin's Creed live-action film, a website for the fictional company Abstergo was launched with an image of CEO Alan Rickon's business card. A phone number and email address for Rickon are revealed on the image, and if you call the number, you'll reach Rickon's voicemail. In the Assassin's Creed film, Rickon is voiced by Jeremy Irons. If you called before the 25th of March that year, you would have heard Rickon say, Hello, you've reached the voicemail of Alan Rickon. I'll be out of the office for business until March 25th with extremely limited availability. Please excuse any delay in communication during this period, as our team and I continue upon Abstergo Industries' mission to provide high-quality products that enrich, entertain, and shape the lives of our customers. Your call is valued, and I look forward to speaking with you upon my return. That message has since been removed, and calling prompts the following. These are the sacred tenants our brother, to stay your blade from the flesh of the innocent, to hide in plain sight, and above all else, never to compromise the brotherhood. If you haven't noticed, sir, this country has gone to heck in a handbasket. If you'll excuse my language. No, I can't wait for the world to end. <laughs> That's the spirit. After setting up your character design in Fallout 4, you should notice a Vault Tech poster in your home. There's a phone number listed in this poster, and when you dial the number in real life, you're connected to the Vault Tech Post Nuclear Survival Hotline. The number had first popped up in the E3 trailer for Fallout 3, and made a reappearance seven years later at the bottom of the official Fallout 4 website. While Bethesda has since disconnected the 1888 number, calling it would have brought you to the following message. Unexpectedly high call volume. All representatives are currently busy. Please stay on the line, and someone will be with you as soon as possible. There are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two,
And now, before we hit number one, it's time for some honorable mentions. The numbers that didn't make the final cut were in the games The Last of Us, Who Framed Roger Rabbit for the NES, and Five Nights at Freddy's. These games didn't make the list for many different reasons. There's two numbers in The Last of Us that, when called, directs you to a sex hotline. Like I said, my list is filled with numbers that have purpose and are intentionally connected to their respective titles. Even though Naughty Dog loves to sprinkle easter eggs in their games, the phone numbers in The Last of Us that led to a sex hotline weren't meant to link to anything, and was merely a mistake on the artist's part who assumed replacing the area code with 555 would make the numbers invalid. Whoops, that was pretty naughty of them. Whatever. A similar occurrence happened in the NES title, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, except theirs was an actual working number at some point. In the game, Jessica Rabbit gives you the number, and dialing that number would have led to a message about different hints for the game. Around 2010, the number went offline and was replaced with a sex hotline. Come on, I can't be the only one who wants to make a joke about Jessica Rabbit's number leading to a sex hotline. Okay, fine. Why didn't I include Five Nights at Freddy's? Rumors have been circulating online for years now that it was possible to call Freddy Fazbear Pizza, the fictional pizza place in the game Five Nights at Freddy's. This didn't make the list because this number doesn't exist, and if you see a bunch of YouTubers with video footage of them calling the pizza place, it's most likely fake. Many numbers have been shared throughout the internet, but the ones that caused the most controversy were two real-world pizza places called Freddy's Pizzeria and Fast Freddy's Pizza and Pasta. I don't I don't know what the aftermath of both situations were, but I do know that the owners had growing concerns as they would be bombarded with over 200 calls hourly from children wondering if it was the same Freddy's from the game. This inevitably affected the company's flow of business, and as a result, Five Nights creator Scott Cawthon told fans, please do not call any phone numbers that you think may be associated with the game. There are no phone numbers associated with the game or marketing. All locations are fictional. Jesus, guys. Anyways, with those out of the way, it's time to reveal the final easter egg. This was by far one of the hardest easter eggs for me to find, and that's why I think it deserves a spot at number one. In the August 2011 issue of the official Xbox magazine, there was a five-page ad for a luxury stay at Benoit Island, also known as Dead Island. The ad contains information on how to get the most out of your vacation. There's a warning plastered on the final page of the ad in red lettering reading, Do not come to Dead Island, showing the phone number 650-238-2599. When you call the number, you hear a zombie moan, and you're directed to the Benoi Island Emergency Hotline for those who have come into contact with the zombies. And those are my top 10 phone number easter eggs in video games. If you can think of any more active phone numbers, let me know in the comment section below. And if you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for other gaming related content. Until next time guys! Pikachu, the best that you can get. Pokemon Pikachu.